Hey, Gadget Martian fans, I'm in front of the Atari World Headquarters here in Sunnyvale, California. I can use your help. I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers with your help. Please like and subscribe down below. Thank you. Here at the Computer History Museum in Mountain View, California on display is the original Prototype Pong arcade machine. It can be argued and debated that this single machine helped launch today's multi-million dollar video game revolution that swept across the world in the early 70s. Here's a little history about how and where it began. It's hard to believe that this location right here was once Andy Capp's Tavern, the place that originally started the whole video game revolution. Here was the original prototype Pong. It's an amazing story how the first Pong prototype made its debut at this local tavern. Here's Al Alcorn and Nolan Bushnell to tell you more about it. Let's put it in a box and put it on location at Andy Capp's Tavern and just see what the public thinks of it. It was a peanut shell on the floor beer bar, you know, and it had a bunch of games in the back. Three days later, we got a service call. And so we thought, oh, geez, we got a reliability problem. So I went over there to my surprise when I opened the coin box. All these quarters gushed out. It wasn't broken. It was just so full of quarters it wouldn't take anymore. People were waiting for the bar to open so they could come in and play Pong. They were playing it all day. There's another building in the area which played an important role in the early stages of the company's success and growth. This building represents the American dream turning a company from scratch into a very, very popular, world-renowned company. Back before Atari, this building was an old, defunct roller rink. It then became the manufacturing facilities for Atari Pong. Today, it's a bingo parlor. We rented an old, defunct skating rink. That was our manufacturing facility. But how do you hire people? The only thing that occurred to us is just go to the unemployment office and get people, and uh, what could go wrong? I didn't realize that all these people were derelicts, and of course we didn't have security. It was crazy time. In order to keep up with the immediate success of the Pong arcade machine, the founders of Atari went on a hiring frenzy, which opened up the door for unreliable employees the company had to filter through. As successful as the Atari Pong arcade machine was in the early 70s, it was not patented. As a result, Atari lost a great deal of market share over similar copycat games out in the market. The goal was to fit the Atari Pong onto a single chip to offer a home TV version of the game. The company was having a difficult time finding toy chains interested in a high-cost home gaming system especially from the recent failures of the Magnavox Odyssey system. Atari founder Nolan Bushnell originally saw an early prototype of the Magnavox Odyssey at a demonstration in Burlingame, California. This game console was the early inspiration for Atari Pong. The Magnavox Odyssey, released in 1972, was the first commercial home video game console invented by Ralph Baer. With only about 350,000 units sold, 
the Odyssey was not considered a commercial success. Determined to give Odyssey a run for its money, Atari wanted to produce a home game system of its own. Sears, having showed interest in getting a possible game system out by Christmas 1975, asked Atari to demonstrate the device at their corporate headquarters in Sears Tower in Chicago. At first, Al Alcorn could not get the game system to display properly on Channel 3 from the conference room television. Having such a strong signal output being broadcast from the enormous TV antenna on top of the Sears Tower, it overpowered the Pong game displaying graphics on Channel 3 in the building below. With the current prototype box filled with so many wires, Mr. Alcorn nervously worked to have the Pong game display on an alternative channel. The demonstration turned out to be a success, and for this reason, later consumer models included a switch the user could toggle between channels to produce the best possible setting for the TV being used. Sears was awarded exclusive rights to Pong in time for the 1975 Christmas season and ordered 150,000 units under this exclusive Sears Telegame Systems name. The game was a huge success. Having struggled before this time, the Atari and Sears partnership definitely boosted Atari profits. A year later, Sears lost its exclusive rights to Pong, and it was then that Atari relabeled the game, adding direct sales to the consumer market. This would be the beginning of Atari home computer systems. If you enjoy these videos, please like, comment, and subscribe below. Also smash that notification bell so you are informed when a new video is released. Until next time, thank you for watching.